Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We get a lot of questions about generators on our channel. And so today we wanted to spend a little time to talk about generators and then also t tell you why we chose two portable 2000 watt generators versus an onboard generator when we purchased our Arctic Fox 27 5L. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video and be sure to like and subscribe. So when it comes to generators, there's basically two types for an RV. You have your onboard or you have your portable. And there's a lot of similarities between the two. They both run on some type of fuel, so that can be either propane, diesel, or regular gasoline. They both require similar types of maintenance, changing the oil, the air filter. Most importantly with maintenance with generators is you want to exercise them um, to keep everything, all the fluids running smooth, keep all those seals lubricated and everything. So the most important thing you could do, whether it's portable or on board, is to exercise that generator. And by exercising it, that they mean usually about one hour per month on a 50% load. So make sure you're doing that no matter what type of generator you have. Portable um, like this is more fuel efficient, less expensive. It has a smaller footprint, um, easy to replace if something goes wrong compared to an onboard generator. You need to make sure if you have a portable generator, you need to make sure it is an inverter generator so that it will produce clean and quiet power. So those loud contractor type generators that you see that are portable, they are, they're loud for one thing. And for the other thing is they're not producing that clean power that your sensitive electronics and all these RVs really need. So if you go with portable, make sure you get an inverter generator and you'll know um, because it'll say on the box and read a bunch of reviews and check it out. Make sure it is that inverter generator because you don't want to damage your electronics. The, uh, the other, um, on the other side, the onboard generators usually can be started from inside the RV. Um, many have digital gauges so you can keep track of your hours, make sure you are getting in the right amount of exercise and uh, no setup other than making sure that they have fuel. So now let's talk a little bit about why we chose to go with the portable instead of the onboard generator. Number one was um, we have solar power on the roof, 860 watts, and lithium batteries. So we just wanted a generator as a redundant power source, not as our primary power source. So. Uh, we didn't feel like we, we needed something built in and large um, to, to be able to use the RV the way that we wanted to. We felt like we could get by with um, just two portables and a um, parallel connection kit to where in a pinch if we needed to, like if it was raining or something like that and we needed to use power, um, we have this as an option. So that was number one. Number two was cost savings. Uh, both th these generators were $400 a piece, and then this parallel connection kit to connect them together was about $70. And so compare that to the cost of about of a Onan 4,000 watt generator, which is a, a little over 3,000. And we thought that the price um, with going with these portables was uh, well uh, was a lot more reasonable than um, installing and spending thirty one hundred dollars on an Onan generator that we weren't going to use very much. So those are the the two main reasons. The other reasons are fuel. Um, these basically sit fuel. You can run them all day, basically on a tank of gas and then also flexible storage. So um, we can throw these in the truck if we need to, we can store them in our front storage bay where that other gener where an onboard generator would be. We can put them in this storage compartment, wherever we needed to store them, um, we had the flexibility to do that. And if we thought we might be able to get away with just bringing one on a trip, we could do that as well. So 
those are um, the reasons. I go back to fuel for a second. These, I said, just sim fuel, we could run all day on just a tank of gas in each of them. Whereas when we were, uh, when we had an onboard generator in our other RV, we were spending like $30 a day in gas if we were having to run the generator because they are so, these are so much more fuel efficient and those seem to be fuel hogs. And this was with a regular gasoline generator. I understand propane is a little bit more efficient, but um, we're just talking about gas in this situation. And then let's talk a little bit about how we use it. So we've only used these a uh, few times since we've had this RV in, in, I guess it's been about two years now. Um, and that is to top off the batteries um, when it's overcast like it is today or raining outside for a few days. As an example, we were in Tennessee and we were staying in somebody's parking lot or driveway and it rained for three or four days straight no sun whatsoever, so the batteries got very low. So we hooked up the generators, charged the batteries back up, and then uh, unhooked them and put them away. So uh, that, that's one instance where we would use it. And the other is if we need to run the AC for more than a couple of hours or more than an hour and we're boondocking, these generators will allow us to do that. We can run it for about an hour off of our batteries, and if it's not like perfect solar conditions, that's about all the, all the batteries can take. So um, we'll hook the generators up and be able to run the AC for longer periods of time. So now as a bonus, um, when we installed the uh, lithium batteries and the inverter in this RV from our old RV, we were able to use the existing generator pre-wiring, which most RVs come with now, they have generator pre-wiring, we use that to connect our inverter because that is where most of the um, most of the circuits that you're going to need when you're boondocking are wired to that generator wiring. So you can save yourself a lot of time and energy running new wire and just use that existing generator uh, pre-wiring that was in there. So that's what we did and it worked out really really well and it took a whole lot less time to set up that inverter. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. I know many of you are saying how can you get a portable generator for $400, a 2000 watt portable inverter generator for $400 and the brand that you saw that we use and we have used for about three years now is WEN, W-E-N, and they sell it on Amazon. And we got this tip from another RVer, and these things run just as good and just as quiet as the Honda generators, in my opinion, at a fraction of the cost. And you can get the parallel connector, really inexpensive, like 70 bucks, to uh, connect the two together. And then you have 4,000 watts for about $870. So we just connect it up through our 30 amp or through our 50 amp power, we use a step down to a 30 and it works really well. Have no complaints about those generators, really like them and they're just so affordable. And if as long as you do the maintenance and keep up with them like, like we do every month, even when we're not using the RV, they'll last forever. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, drop a comment if you say what you prefer, one or the other, the onboard, the convenience of the onboard, or you don't mind using the portables. And until we see you on the road, safe travels.